offers a significant and striking parallelism between the unacceptable political status quo claimed to have been assigned by the Philippine state to the Bangsamoro people. Now, we acknowledge, of course, that here we are working in the context of an armed conflict. An armed conflict inspired by assertions of self-determination by a national minority, where there is the tendency to emphasize more rigid norms for uh, social goals as being central to that minority identity. What do I mean? Many people ask the question, you know, this issue of Moro women and their rights in Islam as Muslim women, shouldn't this conversation be left to Muslims, you know, just to Muslims alone? Shouldn't this be a conversation that should happen among Moros only? Should we really, you know, leave this, uh, tell other people about it, and, you know, make people know that our women have issues? Is that an appropriate conversation to have with non-Moros like you? with non-Muslims like you, with the Philippine government, who might not be Bangsamoro. And um, actually, that kind of, that kind of uh, objection springs from this uh, public and private dichotomy. Here. So there's this assumption that when you say right of self-determination, of self-governance, or, um, well, governance issues, are actually public, you know, public issues, hard issues, so to speak. And if you're talking about gender, that's hush hush, that's private, that's non-public, that's a soft issue that you know we should leave out. You, you don't you don't go to peace negotiations and talk about gender or bring it up even. You you don't do that because that's anyway that's different, okay. And so there's that assumption there. And it's tempting to believe it because it's easy. If you leave the gender question out of it, then you know your conversations will be for the most part non-controversial. You just, you know, uh, you just talk about the law, you talk about the constitution, you talk about um, perhaps UN declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples and other international conventions except the CEDO because anyway the CEDO is not talking about peace negotiations the CEDO is not talking about self-governance so why even bring up CEDO? so it's easy, it's convenient to accept this dilemma to leave it out, to leave the gender issue to some other time however the dichotomy has to be given up because indeed in the context of a peace process where you want to redefine your community to emphasize values of social justice and non-discrimination, there can be no justice in the public space without justice in the private space. And if gender were properly within the domain of the private only, public discourses on autonomy and self-governance will fall short of themselves because the private domains which lie along the outer limits of the so-called public continue to be dominated by values that are discriminatory, hierarchical, and oppressive. So even assuming that the dichotomy can be accommodated in principle, the theory of this dichotomy earlier has to be set aside because the conceptual connection between the private and the public is so intimate that insisting on a separation would become untenable. Indeed, the truth is simple. There can be no equality or justice in society, even in the Bangsamoro, without equality and justice in the family, in the private. And as far as peace building and political transitions go, that is where the nexus lies between gender and the search for just and lasting peace. So thank you very much. Uh,